This lecture is about the superposition of waves. Two waves are in superposition if they are in the same physical location in the medium they are moving through. When waves are in superposition, their amplitudes add together to produce a single wave with a single amplitude, and after they're in superposition, they move away as if they had never interacted in the first place. This animation shows an example of two waves in superposition, so you can see that you have two independent waves that move through each other, and in the times when they occupy the same physical location, their amplitudes add together to produce one overall wave, and then they continue to move as if they never interacted in the first place. You can see the smaller wave is moving to the left, and after interacting it just continues to move to the left, and the larger wave is moving to the right, and after the interaction it just continues to move to the right. So the waves don't bounce off each other or interact with each other in any way outside of their amplitudes adding together while they occupy the same region of space. So that's what we mean by the superposition of waves. The two waves are literally superimposed on the same position. If a wave has an amplitude below the midpoint mark, that amplitude adds negatively to the total amplitude. So if I allow these two red waves to move through each other, the blue symbols on the bottom show what the superposition of the two waves would look like. You can see that at the moment the two red waves occupy the same position. The blue wave, which is the superposition of the two, is totally flat because the amplitudes are canceling each other out because a positive and negative amplitude will work against each other. So waves can kind of cancel each other out that way and then just continue to move as if nothing had happened. This leads to an important new definition. Constructive interference is what happens when two amplitudes in the same direction add to produce a larger amplitude. So they kind of construct, they build off of each other to produce a single larger amplitude. You can see the picture on the left shows constructive interference. If those two waves were superimposed on each other in the same position, they would result in a single wave with a larger amplitude. Destructive interference is what happens when two amplitudes in the opposite direction cancel each other out to produce a smaller amplitude. You can see in the picture on the right, if we superimpose those two waves, their amplitudes are the same size but in opposite directions, so it's kind of like adding an equal positive and negative number to each other. They perfectly cancel out to produce an amplitude of zero, so that would be perfectly destructive interference. To represent superposition, it's common to draw very simple waves with simple amplitudes existing as blocks. We can observe how the amplitudes add together over time as the waves pass through each other. I have here blue wave 1 and red wave 2, and I'm going to have wave number 2 pass through wave number 1. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to draw the total overall wave that would be produced by the interaction of these two waves in purple. To figure out what that wave looks like, I'm always going to add the amplitudes together. And if I have any negative amplitude below the axis, that amplitude is going to take away from any positive amplitude. So the resultant wave of these two would start off looking like this, just a total overall wave with this total amplitude of these two individual waves because they're not really interacting with each other yet. So I'm going to bring wave number two over here, and you can see that the resulting wave now looks like this. There's still no constructive or destructive interference happening, but when I bring wave number two a little bit closer like this, I can see that at the point where the amplitude of wave number two is two, wave number one has an amplitude of negative one, so that's canceling out to produce an amplitude of one. So the resultant wave would look like this overall pattern, where in that one specific position, the amplitude would be one instead of two or negative one. The wave continues to move through wave number one, and now the position on each wave with an amplitude of two is adding together, so the total amplitude is four, and to the right of that, there's a spot where the red wave has an amplitude of one and the blue wave has an amplitude of negative one, so they're canceling out to produce an amplitude of zero. Wave number two continues to move through. This is what the sum of their amplitudes would look like now. Continues to move. This is what it would look like now. And as it continues, we can observe how it looks as it begins to leave wave number one. And finally, once it's completely out, it just continues to move as if the superposition had never happened in the first place. The wave doesn't really carry any memory or any impact from the superposition. It just continues to move on. I'll play that animation one more time just so it can be clear to you how the superposition is happening with the sum of the amplitudes. These are a few more animations to build your intuition about how superposition looks when two waves move through each other. We can now do a few example problems. In example number one, I have two waves moving through each other, 
and I'm given snapshots of where they are at different times. So I can see if I look at this, I have time equals zero seconds going up to time equals five seconds, and I need to predict what the superposition will look like for time equals four and time equals five. I can see as these two waves move forward that A is moving one block to the right every second that passes, and B is moving one block to the left every second that passes. So that means that starting from T equals three, I can just push A one block to the right and B one block to the left, and then look at what their superposition would look like. So I'll start by drawing a dotted line to show where wave A would be. So I'm just shifting it over one more block from where it is in time equals three. I can see that it's four blocks long and the length of the wave itself isn't being affected by the superposition, it's just passing through. So that's wave A. And then wave B is shifted one to the left from where it was in time equals three. So that's also gonna be here. So because these waves are occupying the exact same spot, but one amplitude is positive and the other is negative, the superposition of the two is going to look like this, where the positive and negative amplitudes are perfectly canceling each other out. So right at that moment, the superposition of the two waves would just be a perfectly flat line. So that's what the medium would look like as the two waves pass through. At time equals five, wave A has been shifted one more square to the right, and wave B has been shifted one more square to the left. Drawing the superposition, what the medium that the waves are moving through would look like here, before anything happens, it would look like this. And then here, wave A has an amplitude of zero, but wave B has an amplitude of negative two. So that means the total amplitude will be zero plus negative two, which is just negative two. And then right at this point, A and B are canceling each other out because A now has an amplitude of positive two and B has negative two. So if they're canceling each other out, the total amplitude will just be zero. Finally here, B has an amplitude of zero and A has an amplitude of positive two. So that means that the total amplitude will be positive two. So that's what the superposition of the waves would look like at T equals five seconds. Example problem two says, what will be the amplitude of the superposition of these two waves at five seconds? I can see that this is an amplitude versus time graph of two unrelated waves. And I don't really need to draw any complicated picture here. I just need to remember that the amplitude of two superimposed waves is equal to the sum of the amplitude of each individual wave. I can see that the top wave has an amplitude of positive two at five seconds, and the bottom wave has an amplitude of negative four at five seconds. So that means that regardless of what the overall wave will look like over time at exactly five seconds, the superposition of those two amplitudes will produce a single amplitude of plus two plus negative four, which is equal to negative two meters. So that will be the amplitude of the superimposed waves at five seconds. We can now combine what we know about superposition with what we know about phase difference. Example problem three says this wave is superimposed on the same wave phase shifted by two pi, draw the resulting wave. If you don't remember what a phase shift is, I've left my lecture on that in the description of this video. I know that a two pi phase shift means that the wave is going to be shifted by one complete wavelength. So if I shift this wave by two pi, this is what it will look like. That's kind of like not shifting the wave at all. A two pi phase shift is, is basically just shifting every part of the wave back to where it started. So if I superimpose these two waves on each other, I can see that their amplitudes are in positions to add together to create a larger resultant wave with an amplitude equal to the sum of the two individual amplitudes. And because those individual amplitudes are the same, the resultant wave will have double the amplitude of the original wave. So we can say that perfect constructive interference when two waves add together to produce a larger wave occurs when two superimposed waves have a phase difference of two pi or 360 degrees or just a phase shift of zero. So to get perfect constructive interference, you need a phase shift that's some multiple of two pi. Example number four says this wave is superimposed on the same wave phase shifted by 180 degrees, draw the resulting wave. I know that a phase shift of 180 degrees is a shift of one half of the wavelength. So if I shift the wave that far, this is what it will look like. If I superimpose these two waves on each other, I can see that wherever one wave has a positive amplitude, the other wave has the same amplitude but negative. That means that they're always going to perfectly cancel each other out, and the resulting wave will just be a perfectly flat line on the x-axis. This leads to another important rule. Perfect destructive interference when two waves perfectly cancel out occurs when two superimposed waves have a phase difference of pi or 180 degrees, and that's everything that you need to know about the superposition of waves.